amidst the uh, matchup between Squirtle and Last Shadow. So far, Last Shadow unfortunately has not been able to pull out a win quite yet. And Squirtle really, really kind of dominated him in the last game. Of course, it was just due to the choice of going with a greedy build. He was able to identify that. Of course, the scout helped as well. Knowing that it's cross positions, he immediately was able to send that Zealot over and get that damage done. I think a build like that probably works a little bit better when you're dealing with a map where you've got to find your opponent and they just don't get that instant access right. to where you are. Yeah, knowing so. like, oh, okay, cross positions, I'll actually be able to find right. you every single time. Right. And I believe that Ohana is going to be the next map as yep. we see right there in PVT. This is a Protoss favored map up, matchup. So it's uh, kind of curious to see exactly how that is going to unfold. And I'm going to hop into the game and then we'll go ahead and get this one started as soon as the players are ready. Let's go ahead and ask them. All right, now it's looking like the players are going to be just about ready to go. So this is going to be game two here. Once again, man, I, uh, I'm hoping that Last Shadow has a stroke of brilliance here into this game because this this could potentially be the end of the tournament for him. Because yeah. once you go 0-2 in your group, there's no longer any advancing. There's really no way to advance. I mean, uh, I I don't think there's any possible way. It's, it's literally... Yeah, well, mainly because of the, the way that the matching up worked is that somehow pretty much every single time that they've been doing this, game number two has ended up with the... 0101 against right, the 1010, right, right, which, which is, is actually crazy to think it about because totally that's crazy. not set up that way. Yeah, like. it's just how it uh, how it kind of played out, and of course that means that uh, the winner of the 11 is typically automatically going to be advancing, and the loser of the 0101 is typically eliminated. Let's go ahead and introduce our players here in the southeast position as the blue Terran. It could be his last chance to make a splash here. It is I am Last Shadow. And his opponent took a very convincing game number one in this series, representing Team Startail. He's the Red Protoss. This is Startail Squirtle. And you know, I uh, mentioned it earlier, but uh, the C uh, the uh, APM of uh, Last Shadow, very, very high. He's a very fast player. Um, but that doesn't necessarily always just uh, turn into, you know, turn into skills. Like, you, being fast and still being efficient is still very much, uh, you know, a necessary thing to do. And I want to remind people, you can watch Group C as well on twitch.tv slash Red Bull SC2, where Husky is holding it down. Doing Group C matches, that includes Huck, it includes MC. Uh, who else is in that group? Help me out here. Oh. Uh, uh, we just here. talked about this here. yesterday. I have all the right papers there. right here. Oh, yes, Astoji and Bomber. Okay, there we go. Yeah. There we go. So uh, like, uh, TZ and 2P, a pretty diverse group here. And Legend uh, was able to really capitalize on the fact that Last Shadow did, in fact, go with a CC first in that last game. And uh, he identified that, sent the Zealot out, and that was kind of all she wrote. Of course, uh, Squirtle also did a great job harassing that initial SCV. You know, if you can, you know, if that Rax is already going to be delayed, do anything you can to delay it even more, get that Zealot in, and get the job done. So the Rax is down now. First Marine is going to go out. And uh, he did get a gas down, so we aren't going to have an expansion quite yet. But what opening will he go for? We're going to find out soon. And I've got Squirtle over here just getting a little bit of information. He's obviously... Uh not too worried about anything that's going on. That Marine actually isn't even going to be able to get in there and finish it off as he allows his probe to survive. Pulling back to the end of the base. And now Legend, we can see uh, Squirtle has four Harvesters on gas back at his main. He did make both assimilators there, but does not have either of them fully populated. Yeah, this is a definitely one of these styles we're seeing out of the Protoss a little bit more, allowing them to just get that little extra gas without truly sacrificing a whole lot of your mineral economy. And meanwhile, we are going to have an eBay going down almost immediately here for Last Shadow. Uh, I don't know how far he's actually going to build it up, but every single second that you allow it to go, it's just more and more hit points and harder for a single Zealot, a Stalker to finish up. I can't imagine he's actually going to go for a full finish. And there it is. He finishes it off at 748. 
take a Stalker all day and a Knight to go ahead and get rid of that. And then, of course, the cancellation at the end. So I do believe this is a pretty good decision here by Last Shadow. Yeah, Last Shadow down at his natural, throwing down a bunker of his own so that he can start to get ready for potentially what could have turned into a lot of heavy aggression from Squirtle after he sees that his expansion is going to be delayed. But of course, Squirtle not to be deterred, taking down that engineering bay. And actually, yeah, let's see, his last shadow going to be able to get that cancel in time? Most likely, there it is. Yep, quite early just not to make sure. Not taking any risk there. And uh, yeah, and there is plenty of, uh, of minerals here for a Nexus, and there it does go down. Now, what is last shadow? He looks like he's opening Hellions. up a Hellion build. Which of course is a uh, very typical build versus the uh, versus a, a Zerg player. Now, did he see those Hellions? I think he might have just briefly came down to check to see if uh, he could get some vision at the tower. And I think he saw these two Hellions. That's why he immediately just started to move back. He did not want to leave it all up to this sentry to try to get the job done. And he should be able to thwart this quite easily. Oh, so wow. We see the Hellions move forward. And there's oh. the force field to deny entry into the main base. And those Hellions are likely going to get taken out before they get out of here. He's going to wait for that force field to go down. But there it is. He doesn't even get into the main base. He does not see anything at yeah, all. Yeah, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get up there and see the robo. Now, this would have been really useful information, mainly because the last shadow we can see is falling up with a, a little bit of mech. He's getting a tank out there, so we could see one of those really big tank balloon pushes that we actually saw so often early on. He is dropping down his CC, taking another gas as well. He's going to get a third refinery here. But I'm surprised. Here we go. We've got a starport all the way over here on the uh, northeast side of his base. Now, he did have kind of unique composition come out for, uh, versus Rhett that we saw at the very end. Saw him go with some sort of kind of, you know, semi-mech with some Banshees thrown in. The Banshees did do some damage, but Rhett was actually able to just kind of over come and overthrow his opponent a little bit and we do have the first tanks going out but you know we're gonna have bio with basically no upgrades no tech at all uh if he does spend you know his gas on just the tanks and uh and siege in fact there he goes second factory gonna throw down here so maybe he's just going to go with this bio but have these marines to kind of uh add some additional dps to what he's got going on yeah, so squirtle over here uh he did at one point have a warp prism saved up, or excuse me, queued in his uh, Robo, and it seems like he's just about all but abandoned that as we now see him adding on three more gateways down at the natural. So this is gonna be a huge six gate push. Now he's really only gonna be able to support this for I think like, like one warp in round. Yeah, you know what I think he might just be doing is to get out those stalkers early on and he might just try to use it Ooh. to blink up into yes. the main. He sees that the Banshee is there. He knows that it's going to be coming. Here's a pylon. In fact, he could easily just go ahead and blink up here and, or maybe just get a couple units up here and then go back Ooh. and attack through the front. Either way, it does look like we are going to have an attempted attack here from Squirtle. He's just waiting for that pylon to finish and a warp in. He sees it. Oh, and Last Shadow. Oh, that's like the worst thing that could possibly happen here. It looks like oh, I'm not no. sure if we had a computer freeze or what. But uh, it does look like Last Shadow might have been dropped from the game. About nine minute mark. So we'll find out here momentarily exactly what is happening, what we might need to do. We might have to be seeing a regame here, which would actually work out in Last Shadow's favor quite a bit. Now, I don't know, in this particular case, this, I mean, Last Shadow has, like, pretty good positioning where this is right now. You can see that he's actually almost ready for this blink up with all of the, with the positioning with where these Marines are. And he has his tank not too far from there either. So as soon as those Stalkers think that they can blink up for free, I feel like Last Shadow was, like, ready to trap him. Well, this is one of those interesting situations where we can only guess. We can only ever guess what could happen. And it looks like Lash Edo has been dropped from the game. So we'll find out uh, exactly what's going on here in just a moment. Unfortunate, though, you know, would he have been able to actually hold that off? Um, it's hard to say we, until we actually saw it, but I kind of agree with you. The tanks are in position, the Marines are right there, and once he blinks in, he's got that cooldown right, to deal 10 with. 10 seconds where yeah. he's completely committed to being stuck inside Last Shadow's yep, base. Yep, 
There's not much that he uh, can do at that point, try to exit out. There was, of course, that bunker down at the bottom with, uh, with a few Marines as well. It didn't have, uh, you know, I, I mean, again, it's speculation at this point. I'm guessing that we're just going to be going ahead and moving on to uh, map two again. But we'll find out here in just a moment. So while we wait and find out, we're actually going to go to a brief break. If you want to continue watching StarCraft 2, jump over to the other stream. You've been watching the Red Bull Battlegrounds. I'm Rob Simpson. And I'm DJ Wheat. We'll be right back with more after this. All right, guys, we are back and we have got an update for you. Basically, we had a computer freeze. Of course, these types of things can happen. It wasn't an internet connection. It wasn't anything with Battle.net. It's just simply computer locked up, you know, it's happened to all of us before. Unfortunately, it happened at what could have been a really exciting portion of the game. Uh, yeah. You know, not a whole lot had happened up to that point. Um, but at that point, it looked like the blink up into the main was about to happen. Last Shadow had a great positioning to potentially take it out. And we were looking at it even though the replay was over and done with. And it did look like Last Shadow was going to go ahead and handle that. So there you see our current standings as Rhett is 1-1 uh, right now. Last Shadow 0-1 and uh, parting at 1-1 as well after losing to Squirtle. And we are going to be hopping back into this game. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to join it. Didn't even realize it. And uh, there we go. Thank you very much. So let's go ahead and get this one started as soon as they're ready. And we apologize they're for that. They're almost ready to go here. So this is going to be game number two, man. Once again, I, I actually they're think that the way that that positioning was set up, I just want to talk about that for yeah. a little bit longer, That's man. That's fine. Like, if you look at where the observer was, it just barely was not able to see the Marines and the tanks up there. And that practically would have baited Squirtle into thinking that he was like comfortable enough. Right. And then you've got the 10 second blink cooldown. Oh, also, welcome Austin, Texas. You're Hello. now tuning in for game number two between Startail Squirtle and Last Shadow. So to get these players kicked off down here in the lower right hand corner of the screen, representing Startail, currently leading the series 1-0. He's playing as the Red Protoss. This is Startail Squirtle. And up in the Northwest as the Blue Terran. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Last Shadow. And what Rob was actually talking about is that this is going to be a regame. So game one, 
or excuse me, game two was actually uh, turned into uh, a, a battle that looked like it was going to be Blink Stalkers using the Observer to blink up into the main. And uh, it just so happened that Last Shadow was ready and waiting. He had a handful of Marines, about 10, 8, 10 Marines. He had two tanks. And, and a it, third not too far away, yes. either, right? Like just at the front of the base where like even even if for some reason Squirtle was able to see what was going on, it, like he, he could have still thought that he was going to win that battle. Yeah. It was just so dumb. It was kind of a kind of a crazy situation. We were about to see it unfold, but unfortunately then suddenly there was a computer freeze and now we are going back into game two. Game one was quite interesting as well where we saw Last Shadow go for a very, very fast CC first, mm -hmm. no racks. It was identified by Squirtle and what he decided to do was expand make two Zealots, send them over to his opponent's base, and he ended up doing a ton of damage against it. Having known that he just took an even further lead, he put down a third Nexus, and at that point, Last Shadow knew that he was in trouble, and he saw the GG. Well, I mean, people talk about it all the time. Getting a Zealot in your worker line early in the game when you have nothing to defend it can be so crucial. I mean, oh, they yeah. deal 16 damage a swipe, so for all the workers, that's only three hits, and they're just, they just can die so fast. And there's a lot of really intricate Zealot micro that can happen as well to close the gaps, even if you're trying to use, use uh, the mineral jumping. Now, so far, it actually seems like Squirtle is going to go for the exact same build that he went for in the last game, getting these two gas pretty early, the side cord going down, and uh, he may choose to still go with Blink Stalkers. It can be uh, a good approach here. Of course, there's a lot of different areas where you can uh, use that Observer to blink up and get the damage done. But the interesting thing is, you know, did he go back? Did he watch the replay afterwards? Uh, a lot of times these guys will to see, well, what was my opponent going for? Uh, what this Would this have been a good decision for me to make? Uh, sometimes it can be a blessing that uh, something like that happens. Of course, not for us, the spectators. But uh, it didn't happen, and that's kind of how uh, it dealt with it. But look at over here on the far west side. It looks like a hidden factory. What is he going to decide to do with this? Could just choose to go. Well, he does have uh, just the one gas, so maybe just a single Banshee coming out. So we have the tech lab going down here on the racks. Dude, earlier on, we actually saw that Last Shadow isn't afraid to get a couple Hellions out here. And he was actually so close to being able to get them up into Squirtle's main as well. You only have to kill a couple probes for that right. to be worth and it. Right, and actually the only reason why he wasn't able to do it is because uh, Squirtle had those two stalkers, if you remember, mm -hmm. that just happened to go down and check the uh, check the uh, the tower down below, and they saw the two Hellions just as they were skirting and then by. And also had the sentry ready as well. I don't think the game was actually just so close. And now we're starting to see that down here, Last Shadow is starting that Hellion production out of his factory. Yeah, so this is actually kind of interesting, right? He's going to go ahead, he's going to expand, he's gotten a uh, first Marauder, he's going to get a few more out, and he's going to get Custer Shells with it. So he's going to use that to obviously do a lot of damage versus uh, versus the Stalkers, and then maybe try to just follow up and have two, three, maybe even four Hellions to go in, wreck the Mineral Line, or deal with some of those lighter units. So this could actually work out quite good as we do have three gateways going up mm -hmm. and the Robotics Facility and there'll be quite a few units coming into full effect here along with some SCVs they can do repair on these Hellions. There's just a single Hellion, two Hellions out right now and let's see what kind of damage Last Shadow might be able to do. This is so, I mean, how often do you see a player move out with such a, a small force and then using such a small amount of, of uh, SCVs as well? He's just going to use it to soak up a little bit of that damage and it's looking like Squirtle is pretty much unawares at this point. Now, he did just finish up his gateway so he's got a few warp gates completely operational in here. We also have a bunker being started down at the natural, but the forces are split up just a little bit. We see one of the Hellions moving around to the back of the main. It gets one probe kill so far, and then we also have this push out here as the Immortal finishes, and Squirtle is looking relatively short, but he's losing units left and right. Yeah, he is, but all he has to do is stop this bunker from going down. He will easily thwart this. As you can see, a ton of damage is being done. We do have one Hellion inside the main base, but I'm not sure that he's actually done. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He does have 10, ten kills. kills completely missed that while all the action was happening at the front. He did manage to keep that Hellion alive inside the main base and uh, damage was most certainly done there. You could see 23 SCVs to 19 probes, but you know, uh, what can he do here? Is he going to continue to get Hellions out? Maybe try to do another run by? I don't think he's going to have anything here, but will he be ready for a counterattack? That's the big question. 
So now, not only does Last Shadow have a small SCV advantage, but he also has that second orbital command that's just about to finish up. So he's going to be able to pump out those mules just so fast. And, and really, he's in a great position to push his advantage. Now, of course, we've seen that Squirtle did already expand, and he was able to hold that expansion. So if he's able to continue his pro production, really, without any further pressure coming out from Last Shadow, this game's just, uh, I mean, very clearly going to go on with no advantage to either player. Well, here we go. The Observer's going to come in, see exactly what's going on here at the front. I think the biggest thing is he's going to see that there's only one barracks in production. Going to wonder where in the heck did those Hellions come from? And, and it was seen out. anyway. We do see that factory lift off, but the four Hellions moving out. There is going to be enough defense here. And there was a window where it appeared as if there was going to be no units there as they moved out to the middle of the map, but that is not going to be the case now is as easily thwarted but look at this the factory now moving over he's going to plant it down here and he may continue to do uh that hellion uh, harass there if he can get it done and so back over in last shot his base i mean he's just about got that starport wrapped up he's now adding on his reactor tech lab just finished up onto his racks now last game to also catch you guys up there was going to be a really heavy marine tank push from Last Shadow, but it seems that he's completely moved away from that. There's much more Marauders out here than there were last game, and there's certainly more Hellions. Oh, and what's interesting is that after seeing that, uh, that his factory had been found, he simply lifted it off and moved it to a different base. Yep, which worked out quite good. I mean, he'll like close that down and they'll have to kill that in order for them to actually get that Nexus down. Here we have the Hellions moving out yet again. Still looking for an opportunity to potentially poke up there, but you can see Squirtle's ready for this. These two sentries should be more than enough to get the job done. The Twilight Council going down along with two more gateways, and we do have plus one armor on the way. Uh, plus one attack. No, that will be the first upgrade that we're going to see here for Squirtle. The Hellions are going to do not much other than try to get him some map mm -hmm. control here. But, uh, I mean, even then, it's not going to be that uh, easy for him to do. And so as Squirtle finishes up his Twilight Council, we now see Blink coming into play. He's also going to be chrono boosting that out. So we're likely going to see that Stalker count continue to climb. Now, we don't see Last Shadow staying terribly active on the map with any of his units. Now, out in front of this map is the only observer that's currently in play, or excuse me, there's two of them, but the one that he could potentially use if he wants to blink up into that base. And now over here on the left side, we do have a drop coming in packed with four of those Hellions, but Squirtle is fully aware. Yeah, yeah, fully aware indeed. In fact, he was really looking for something like this to actually happen. You remember he had his stalkers right over here to see if there's anything coming in from the north. And over here on the west side, he stopped that quite easily. This pylon just got a quick peek of that medevac and such a quick response coming out by Squirtle. We're going to see that factory lifted and head on out. That will allow Squirtle to take that third base. And what is the end game for Last Shadow here? He uh, has no upgrades quite yet, but he's working on them. Stim's about ready to finish. Combat shield's going to be done and uh, soon. And then he's got a plus one weapon coming out. You see Squirtle making the uh, transition, of course, seeing all bio to the uh, to the uh, robotics bay, and there it is. Colossus eventually going to be coming out. And now it's, it seems like, oh, unfortunately for Last Shadow, he's been supply blocked, only just starting his supply depot, so his production is going to be halted momentarily while he waits for those to finish up. And now he's using that factory to get in and get as much information as he can. A couple additional stalkers being warped in down at that third base of Squirtle to finish off the factory. Yep, factory is going to eventually fall in a blaze of glory. There it goes. Wow, look at that piece. Look at that. Bounced away. away. There we go. The Observer's going to go in. He has a good idea of everything that is happening within Last Shadow's base. If you look at Last Shadow, you can see his, uh, his vision is somewhat limited, but he knows most about the tech that is coming out by uh, his opponent, with the exception here of, of course, the uh, Robotics Bay and the uh, addition of the Colossus. So is that going to be a surprise for him? Not sure if he's actually been able to, uh, you know, get any information beyond what he's seen at the front. And without taking a third yet, do we even have a third CC down yet? It doesn't look like it. He's going to have to make something happen with the units that he's currently got here. And now we saw Squirtle up in the upper left-hand corner of the map. He was staying af active with his observer, and he now knows exactly how many Vikings Last Shadow already has in play. So that's probably going to deter Squirtle from moving across the field with, with uh, his Colossus like it was looking like he was planning to. And 
Well, the third base is going up right now. I don't know if you saw, but the uh, drop did try to come in. He quickly loaded back up after realizing that the base was not done yet. He was going to do no damage versus an unconstructed Nexus. Uh, still looking for an opportunity just to poke in there. And uh, the Viking count is being recognized here by Squirtle, just as you mentioned. And more and more Vikings are coming out. There's only two medevacs out on the map right now, but they are sitting pretty good with a full energy. And now we are going to have 1-1 one, one Marines here soon. But the Colossus should be out by the time they actually get an opportunity to attack. This three-base Protoss is starting to gear up. He'll get himself saturated and is looking really good. Well, and he's going to have charge completed on his Zealots as well. His Zealots are currently plus one. He's waiting for his plus two armor to finish up there. And now he just finished his Storm Research as well. Now we've got Last Shadow starting to move across the center of the map. Oh, yeah. And he's got an SCV army joining in as well. And oh, if he doesn't know about this, he does have vision. And they're the Vikings. Vikings might be able to get in a good position versus that Colossus. Is he a... Storm, yeah. Yes, he does yes. have Storm ready to rock and roll. He's going to get official hits there with the oh, Vikings. Wow. He will take out the Colossus quite easily, and now he can engage. Oh, man, this is actually looking relatively good for Last Shadow. Now, he's going to have to dodge as many of those storms as he possibly can. We can see that those Zealots are sitting out there in hold position for just a little bit after they used their initial charge. And now the Zealots are dying left and right as Last Shadow does what could be a very oh. successful push, but unfortunately, those storms are just so good. Yeah, I mean, he might be able to do some damage here to the third, but it doesn't look like he has more Vikings now. The Vikings have landed. He's starting to move this in, and I think he will be able to take out the third. What? Is Squirtle going to go for a flank here, cutting off those reinforcing units? No, he can't really afford to because this army could come up here and begin to attack the natural. Here he's starting to move up the ramp just a little bit. Got to watch out for those storms yet again. Not sure if he's even got the energy for it. Looks like there is a storm. If you can get it on that choke, he'd be in great shape, but he's looking for Last Shadow to commit before he throws it down. Right, so here we have, he's, he's got enough energy for actually a couple of storms. Now, if Last Shadow just gets a little too far off that ramp, we could see the sentries force field in that army, and then they would pretty much just be storm food. Yeah, and right now he is just trying to take care of these zealots. He's going to bring another force in through the back, and there's oh. the big storm dropping down right on top of that choke. He's dealing with this on both fronts. The medevac's about ready to fall as well. He's got a few more uh, zealots be warped in. They take care of all these units up top, and this will be cleaned up, trying to get rid of his final zealot. Unfortunately, Marauders, only one of you oh. will leave. And there we go, double storm that is completely cleaned up by Squirtle. Oh, man, so Squirtle getting out there and showing him that, yes, yeah, sure, I'll trade you my third base for your army. That's fine. And he's also taken a pretty significant supply lead as well, if you take a look in the upper right-hand corner there. 110 to 74. And this is pretty much going to trigger Squirtle to start moving across the map. They're using those charge elves to try to close the gap. Last Shadow doing what he can to Micro there. Yeah, I mean, just trying to take out any unit that he possibly can. Now he's oh. going to be on their own. And there it is. GG. And Squirtle does defeat Last Shadow. Two games to zero. So it does mean that Squirtle is now 2-0 in his group, which means that he is pretty much set to make it to Championship Sunday. Yep, absolutely. I think a lot of people expected that as well. I think we now have a tie between Harding and Rhett. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see exactly what the, uh, you know, what the standings are as far as those guys are concerned. But uh, it does mean that one match should decide who the second player is who will advance. This is similar to the situation that we saw in Group A, where uh, Violet versus Illusion dictated who actually moved on with Stefano. And in this case, it's going to be Parting versus Last Shadow. So that should be really interesting, because that's going to define that. Yeah, exactly. My thoughts, exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching the Red Bull Battlegrounds. When we come back, there's going to be more StarCraft II. I'm Rob Simpson. And I'm DJ Wheat. We conclude the Group D in just a moment when we return. Thanks for joining us.